Well, I'm very glad to uh, be back at the Hay Festival, one of the, my uh, favorite places to talk about books. And I'm particularly glad to be back at this session, which is dedicated to the thought of Edgar Morin. Uh, Mor uh, Edgar Morin was a great, has been a great influence on me uh, because his work uh, is an attempt to integrate nature and culture in a way which gives culture a kind of, of uh, uh, a formal role as something more than articulating nature, but actually making it. And uh, it seems to me today, you know, he's, he's lived a good deal of time, it seems to me that today his thought is more uh, necessary than ever because it is a way of thinking about issues like climate change uh, and the, the shaping of, the, of what we think of as the natural environment according to rules which are uh, derived from cultural practices and cultural understandings between people. So I'm delighted. Um, uh, that you pay homage to him, as I do in my own work. I'll tell you a little about what I have been uh, doing for the last 10 years, which is a project called the Homo Faber Project. And it's an attempt to look at human beings as um, makers. And I've tried to look at three kinds of making in which they engage. One is the relation between uh, material understanding and, and making uh, between the head and the hand, um, which is a project about craftsmanship. And the second is uh, an effort to understand how people do this together, about the collaborative ways um, in which people uh, uh, make things, uh, about cooperation and its difficulties. And the third part of this project is um, about how the uh, urban environment in particular is shaped, which is a subject that goes back to a preoccupation I've had for all, all my life, which is uh, how do we actually make places. Uh, and just to give you a heads up on the problematic in each of these and then how I see them uh, fit together. Uh, in the craftsman, what I'm interested in is the notion of something that is deeply, deeply fraught in modern capitalism. That is the relation, the uh, desire to make something well for its own sake. Uh, in capitalism, that's um, I can't say it's it's a negative, but it's a new it's a neutral concept. If it sells, it doesn't matter whether it's good or good or bad. Um, the uh, the sociological setting for that is that a lot of capitalist labor erased the kind of mental activity which I think has to go into doing something well, which is to make things. Um, in which you're engaged by the hand in material production. There's a great danger in that, in, in that of being nostalgic about you know, crafts uh, as they were in the past. We're inventing all sorts of new kinds of crafts today. Uh, uh, medical crafts, which engage uh, 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 thinking uh, in thinking with one's hands, even as I found in teaching at MIT, that that whole dimension of craft work, of trying to materialize how you think, is something that goes on when people do really good work in um, uh, creating computer programs. Uh, in fact, there is a whole movement called Craft and Code, 
which is trying to uh, uh, raise the level of uh, a lot of commercial uh, code, like um, most code written by Microsoft, which is very mediocre in quality, by having people try to learn from what craftsmen um, of an older generation did. So what interests me in this is how that process actually occurs and uh, what kind of narrative goes on in, um, in trying to do things well for its own sake. Uh, I think there's a kind of grounding in the human body for that, which is that um, our brains developed uh, largely because we had the kind of um, uh, digital things in our hands which allowed us to manipulate objects in ways that um, uh, other mammals cannot. And our brains are, are hardwired to the notion that tactile uh, experience is a way to think, that you think while you're actually touching something, manipulating it, shaping it, smelling it, hearing it, and so on. Um, and the effort that I've made in that book is to try and bring that kind of basic uh, way of thinking about making that is embedded physically in us as human beings into a um, economy and a society which divorces the head and the hand. Um, as I say, it's partially a capitalist thing about material production, which is indifferent to quality. It's also a, uh, uh, a, a question about uh, the ways in which uh, we can recredit again um, uh, manual activities in the society at large. So it has a both, it has a, um, uh, uh, productive and it has uh, a, a stratification element to it. And that's my first book. People can't do this alone, and that's the uh, proposition that I look at in the second book called Together uh, in English. And what I'm interested in there is a fundamental contradiction, which was signaled to me by uh, Edgar Morin, which is the distinction between solidarity and cooperation. In solidarity, we are uh, doing the same things with people who we think understand us or who we understand. Uh, and we're doing things that are, are, are shared between us, sometimes think of this as a commons. Uh, but in life, we're frequently thrown together with people who are different from us, whose lives we can't understand nor should pretend to, uh, people who are offend us. Um, and the notion that I had is what kind of cooperation can we have with people like that? With people, how can we transcend solidarity in order to have a kind of co cooperation with uh, those who are different? And I, uh, I referred to my first book about this, the uh, because of uh, craftsmanship, because I took the workshop as a model for ways in which people who are very unlike could work together. Although in this case, I focused more on workshops that are not like the medieval workshop, but are modern laboratories or musical um, uh, cooperation of this sort. Uh, you may know that I, I have another life as a musician 
And it's always struck me that the whole issue in cooperating with other people uh, who are playing different instruments, as in an orchestra or uh, in a band, is that you are trying to not play in unison, get on the same page, but find a way of uh, cooperating with people who are doing something very different. And it led me into the real substance of that book, which is not the explanation which binds people together, but nonverbal forms of communication. How physically we signal to other people what we are doing, uh, how we cooperate with our bodies rather than through kind of verbal uh, contracts or verbal understandings of being all on the same page. And um, I, I'm very interested in nonverbal communication as an artist, but I also think it has a lot to do with uh, the social domain uh, outside of art, which is most of the ways in which we get along with people who are different are not articulated verbally as to what we share interested me, uh, particularly with crowds of people who are diverse people in cities. And that brought me to the third volume in the Homo Faber uh, series, which is called Building and Dwelling in English, a title I regret <laughs> uh, because this book is really, it's about open cities. How do you open up the city? so that it's uh, porous, it's a place where people who are different can live together, do things together without uh, requiring that people um, uh, share a solidarity. How do you get beyond the idea of community in which people who are together band together? And instead, how is it possible in city cities for people who are uh, not the same, nonetheless to band together in making things in the city. So in this third volume, I look at a lot of the issues about construction, material construction and cooperation, the workshop-like conditions, as they apply to creating open urban forms and Conversely, I look at the kinds of open urban forms uh, which allow people who in a complex situation uh, to, to live together. And uh, I'm interested in the way in which porosity in urban space, for instance, means that all sorts of differences can leak into a field of, or into a, into a space the kind of antithesis of a gated community, which is non-porous, which is solid. I'm very interested in incomplete forms in architecture, uh, which require people to live in the forms together uh, in order to, um, uh, to develop them. And I'm very much against a kind of architectural ethic which gives form people gives buildings or spaces to people fully made for them to inhabit. And finally, I'm interested in the whole area of co-production, which is something in my life as a planner, I've always tried to uh, uh, practice, which is how can makers and users work together uh, to produce a kind of open form uh, which can evolve in time and which serves the needs of people, but not merely in one generation, but in future generations. So that's what I've been doing. I have been trying to understand human beings as makers uh, uh, in the pursuit of making well, making it well together, and making a place in which these acts of making can can occur. And uh, that's me. <laughs> so as I say, that's me. Uh, I 
be very uh, 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 receptive, indeed grateful, for uh, comments from you who have listened to this talk. And I think the best way to manage this is for you to send questions uh, to the Hay Festival, and they'll convey those to me, and we'll, uh, uh, I'll try to respond as, as best I can. My only request to you is make them short. So don't ask me <laughs> uh, to give another lecture, but uh, I, uh, uh, I would be very um, interested to know what you make of this view of Homo Faber. Thank you very much. Thank you.